In this video, I'm gonna show you three ways of getting some stochasticity or randomness into your patch. The first way is obviously the random object. So here I have random 128, which means I could get 128 possible integers, and that always starts at zero. So my lowest number is going to be zero, and my highest possible number will be 127. When I send random a bang, it gives me a random number in that range. So I'm gonna turn this on, and I'm sending these values into a multi-slider right now, and that's just so that we can visualize in this video the distributions of each of these methods. So you can see here that it looks like the night sky, you've got um, these little stars everywhere, uh, pretty much evenly distributed across zero to 127. The second method is the drunk object. So the drunk object named for the drunkard's walk, which you imagine stumbling along, the direction is changing, the, the, the step size is changing every given step. So drunk, oh, where's my image? Sorry, let's pull it up, here it is. So I have a number line here to show you the difference. Whereas with random, we could select from any number in our range. So in this number line, this is zero to 99. It's an argument of 100. For random, every time we ask for a new number, we get a number in the zero to 99 range. For drunk, the next number is always related to the current number. So we can never fall out of our specified step range. If we're at 25 and our step range is five, we're never gonna get 90 for our next value. We're always gonna stay sort of close to right where we're already at. So let's uh, send drunk a bunch of bangs here just to see what we get. And you can see that this distribution looks much, much different. We're just wobbling around, but always within that same specified step size, which in this case I have asked to be 10. And the last way that we can get stochasticity into our patches is through this object called iTable. So iTable is actually an XY graph. The way that you would normally use it is send an X value to then get a matched Y value. We're not gonna use it in this way. We're gonna use it in its other uh, cool function, which is that if you send it a bang, it sends you a random number. And it's actually not a, exactly a random number. It's a number within the distribution that you're drawing. So for example, let me draw something simpler so that we can see this. I'm gonna say that I want my lower x values. Let's go all the way over here. So um, in my x direction, that's horizontal, right? That, this is zero and this is 127 over here. So I want more lower values, and as I get higher, I want fewer of those higher values. I'm gonna turn that on and we'll show you that I'm graphing these and there's definitely more stars, more little dots here at the bottom and fewer at the top. If I redraw this the other direction, then I get more stars at the top, more little dots, and fewer, though there are still, uh, there are still lower numbers being drawn. They're just with less frequency, less probability. I could draw something funky here, like here's a wave. I don't know, let's actually be more dramatic about it. Right. So we can see that this distribution is matching. Now we have this suspicious uh, black line here in the middle. Right here, it's this middle corresponding here where we're not getting very many of those values. So these are three different ways that you can add some stochasticity into your patches and add some randomness into your MIDI compositions or your poetry robots or whatever it happens to be that you are composing by algorithm.